Hey everyone, in this video I'm really excited to talk to you about a data science concept called inverse transform sampling. So this name sounds a little bit scary and in fact it won't be clear why this is the name of this method until the end of this video when we figure out how to actually do the thing that we're trying to do. Um, but in general this is a data science method for taking a certain distribution such as the uniform distribution and doing some kind of transformation to it in order to turn it into a different distribution. Now before we get into all the math of it and what it actually means, um, let's think about why we might want to do this. So we know that if we have any kind of computer program, we can pretty much just generate any common distribution we want. We can generate the exponential distribution or the normal distribution or the uniform distribution. But behind the scenes, the computer is doing something to generate numbers from that distribution. And this video will basically go into what the computer is doing behind the scenes. It's helpful for us to understand that, even though we can just access it for free without thinking about it, it's gonna be helpful to kind of think about it to get a better grasp of how transformations get made in data science and how we can take a certain set of numbers and map it onto a different distribution of a set of numbers, okay? So here is the setup. Let's say we have uniform numbers in the interval zero through one. Remember, a uniform distribution means any number in zero through one, so any real number in that range has an equal probability of being chosen uh, if the numbers are distributed in such a way. And uh, let's just say we have this distribution for free. We'll make videos in the future about how to actually get at that distribution. Um, but let's say for now that we have these numbers for free. We have the uniform distribution zero to one. So here is the probability density function of the numbers from zero to one. We see that there's not a lot of exciting stuff going on. Every number in this range zero to one has an equal chance of being called. The density is the same across the board. Now here comes the exciting part. We want to take these uniform numbers, and our goal is to generate an exponential lambda distribution, okay? Um, a quick refresher, an exponential lambda distribution has the following probability density function, or PDF, where the function is given by e to the negative lambda x if x is bigger than or equal to zero, and zero if x is smaller than zero. But that basically means that the exponential distribution only cares about numbers that are zero or positive, and the density, the probability density of any given number in that range is given by e to the negative lambda x, where lambda is a parameter you put into the exponential distribution. Okay, and the corresponding CDF or cumulative density function, uh, quickly refresher, the cumulative density function says that for any x you put in, it tells you the probability of uh, you picking a number that is x or less. So in this case, if we choose our x to be right here, the CDF will tell you the area that's between zero and X that's under this curve, also known as what's the probability you choose a number that's X or less from the distribution. So the CDF, recall for the exponential lambda distribution is given by one minus E to the negative lambda X for all X bigger than or equal to zero. So it looks very similar to the PDF. It just has this one minus in front of it, okay? So our goal is to somehow, we have these uniform uh, zero, one numbers. We want to somehow apply some kind of transformation to each of these numbers so that the resulting set of numbers, the resulting set of numbers we get after applying the transformation to each one follows this new exponential lambda dis, uh, distribution instead. How are we going to do that? Um, and th in this case, we did it for the exponential lambda, but there's other cases we might want to do this. We might want to generate a normal distribution, the typical bell curve you see we might want to generate a gamma distribution. It just, we don't know exactly what kind of distribution we want to generate. So we want to be prepared in all cases. So let's think about this. Let me first get rid of the PDF and just write the CDF because it's going to focus a lot more on the CDF. Okay, so here I've just retained the CDF of the exponential distribution. Again, it's this form right here. Now, what do we actually want? Remember, we want to figure out a transformation T. So big T here is a function. We want to apply that transformation to our uniform numbers. So big U here is our uniform distribution that we have right here. We want to apply that transformation and we want that to be equal to X, where X is numbers that are in this exponential distribution. So at a high level, we want to figure out what's the transformation. So this is the T in question. That's what we want to solve for. What is the transformation we can do to U in order to get the exponential numbers back? Well, the only thing we really have right now is this CDF. So let's work from there. We know that f x of x is a CDF, which is the probability that the exponential distribution is less than or equal to small x. Remember, this is straight from the definition of what a CDF is. Cumulative distribution function uh, basically just tells us what's the probability that this distribution 
lies behind any given value. In this case, it's small x, okay? So that's the definition of the CDF. Now, we just said that we want to find the transformation. So we have t u is equal to x. So we can write this as probability t u is less than or equal to x, right? Because t u is the same thing as big X. Now let's go ahead and take the inverse of t on both sides. So we get probability that u, remember when we take the inverse and apply it to the function, it just cancels out. So we just get the argument itself, which is big U, is less than or equal to the inverse of t applied to this x, right? So we apply the inverse of t to both sides here. So what's the probability that the uniform distribution is less than or equal to some value t inverse of x? So here's the t inverse of x value. What's the probability the uniform distribution is behind that range? Okay, so it's in this range here. Well, it's really easy for the uniform distribution because we know that the probability of being behind some range is just that value itself. Um, to make that more concrete, let's say I asked you in the uniform distribution, what's the probability of being behind 0.75? So if t is equal to 0 0.75, the probability of being behind 0 0.75 is just 0 0.75 because that's how much area there is behind here. And that all comes from the uniform, really friendly nature of the uniform distribution. That means that the probability of big U, so uniform distribution being less than or equal to t inverse of x, is simply just t inverse of x itself. It seems like we didn't do that much, but in fact, we've derived a very, very important result. Um, namely, we found that fx of x, the cumulative distribution function for the uh, exponential distribution, is equal to the inverse of t of x. That means that fx and t are inverse functions because f is equal to the inverse of t. Therefore, we know that t is equal to the inverse of x. So what we can write here, let me write it in red to set it apart from everything else we've written. We know now, uh, well, let me write down the first result. We have that fx of x is equal to t inverse of x. That's what we just derived. We can take the inverse on the other side, so we get that fx inverse of x is equal to t of x. And this is the big result that we've captured here. We actually now have a closed form solution for this transformation. And this transformation basically says that the closed form transformation is that it's the inverse of this cumulative density function. This cumulative density function being 1 minus e to the negative lambda x. If we figure out the inverse of that function, we're going to have exactly the transformation we need in order to apply to all the uniform numbers in order to get the exponential lambda dis uh, distribution back. So the last part of this video is that we're going to just go ahead and figure out what is that um, inverse for the exponential distribution. But this works in general, right? Because when we derived this, we didn't assume anything about the distribution being exponential. We just said there's some distribution um, numbers x that we're trying to get at. How do we do that using the uniform distribution? And we found that in order to do that, you take the CDF of the target distribution you're trying to get to, find the inverse of the CDF if possible, and that's the uh, function that you're going to run your uniform numbers through in order to get back this distribution. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out this uh, function, this transformation for the exponential lambda distribution. Okay, so again, here's a CDF of the exponential distribution. We want to figure out what's the inverse of this function here. To find the inverse, um, it can be difficult, but in this case, it's pretty easy. Let's go ahead and set y equal to this function. So y equals 1 minus e to the negative lambda x. Now, to find the inverse, we're just going to solve for x. So we get 1 minus y is equal to e to the negative lambda x. Uh, then we're going to take the natural log of both sides, so ln of 1 minus y is equal to negative lambda x. Now let's just divide by negative lambda on both sides. So we get x is equal to negative natural log of 1 minus y over lambda. And that's it. So we found that in order to get from the uniform distribution to the exponential distribution, this is the transformation we'll apply. Um, one thing we'll do is replace this y by a u, so it's more clear that we're putting uniform numbers into here. So we get x is equal to negative natural log of 1 minus u over lambda. In fact, there's one more slight uh, kind of optimization we can make here. So we get 1 minus u, right? But the uniform distribution, since it goes from 0 to 1, um, using 1 minus u is the same thing as using u. Because if we do 1 minus u, we're going to get basically the symmetric opposite of u. Um, so it doesn't matter which one we use because of the uniform nature of the uniform distribution. In fact, you can keep it 1 minus u if you want, but just to make this formula look a little bit prettier, we can just go ahead and 
substitute 1 minus u for u. And that's it. So to recap, if we have uniform numbers from 0 to 1, and we take the negative natural log of these numbers, we pick, let's say, a million of them uh, from the uniform distribution, and for each of the million numbers, we run it through this transformation here, uh, the resulting numbers we get back, the resulting transform numbers, are going to follow a uh, exponential lambda distribution. And that's how we get there. You can do this for similar distributions. As long as you can invert the cumulative density function, you can do this. And that's why this is called inverse transform sampling, because we are using the inverse of the cumulative distribution function, and we are using that to transform the uniform distribution into the distribution we want. Okay, hopefully that made sense. Go ahead and leave some questions in the comments if you want any clarification. And until next time.